Hello, today we are covering dementia module 3, fostering communication and understanding. This is the book we are going to continue to use. You can order uh, the book on this phone number or on this website. Uh, I also attached the PowerPoint so you can follow me through with that. Today we are talking about uh, dementia, how to foster communication. So before we can talk about it, uh, let's say what are the behaviors of the dementia people. Dementia people might have a difficulty finding a specific word or say another word instead because they can't say the word for it. And sometimes they may not understand what you are saying or they may not understand uh, the part that you are saying. Uh, people with dementia, they may speak easily, but they may not make sense. And they also can talk about past events, but not remember the recent event. Most of them have difficulty expressing emotional appro emotions appropriately. And some of them also experience difficulty with writing. And they can read words, but may not understand the meaning. There's a lot of behaviors that we can see. But uh, these are some of their difficulties uh, that we can see on dementia people. Uh, lesson eight is communicating with people who have dementia. On this module, we are going to cover uh, lesson eight and lesson nine. Okay, let's go with uh, lesson eight, communicating with people who have dementia. When providing care for individuals with uh, memory impairment, Communication involves more than just a spoken dialogue. As you can see here, there's like verbal communication and nonverbal communication. Verbal communication is a type of communication where we spoke and write words to get our message and information across to the other person. This is how we talk normally every, every day. Uh, nonverbal communication is the transfer of information through the body language facial expression, gesture, and created space, and more. There's more, uh, we have to observe the sign language that uh, the clients are expressing through the body language, which is a nonverbal communication. Now we are going to look at the progression of dementia and its influence on communication. Dementia impacts the brain regions responsible for communication. And as dementia advances, the individual communicating abilities deteriorate, and these changes vary throughout the course of dementia progression. In each phase, changes may occur in comprehension, language skill, and social communication. Comprehension refers to the capacity to grasp the meaning of something, and language skills encompasses both the comprehension of words and gestures received by individuals, which is a receptive language, and how individuals express their thoughts and feelings using words, signals, and gestures. That's expressive language. And social communication pertains to the aptitude for engaging in conversation with, uh, with social uh, setting. There are three types of uh, dementia, early phase of dementia, um, middle phase of dementia, and then late phase of dementia. In each uh, phase of dementia, we're going to look at the comprehension, the language skills, and uh, the social communication. We're gonna look at these three. Uh, early phase of dementia. Uh, in this, uh, most people with dementia with this stage experience mild loss of recent memory. Uh, comprehension, they have a difficulty understanding complex conversation and may have difficulty following direction, and may have difficulty understanding facial expressions, gestures, humor, sarcasm, and other non-verbal cues. And language skill may have difficulty what to say. You know, some related words difficulty. Uh, some words becoming confusing for them. If they want to say sugar, they say salt. If they want to say salt, they have sugar. So they replace the words with other words. They think they, that's the word. Social communication changes the subject to hide their difficulty. 
tend to repeat themselves, rely heavily on overused phrases and expressions. This is uh, what early dementia looks like. I have an example here. Uh, Robert was sitting in the dining room, uh, sipping on his coffee, and requested his wife, Wendy, to hand him the salt for his coffee. Wendy ap appeared puzzled because he asked salt for his coffee. He usually asks sugar. So Wendy appeared puzzled, prompting him to correct himself and request sugar instead. Observing Robert's increased struggle with words lately, Wendy expressed her concern by inquiring about his well-being. Robert deflects her concern by changing the topic and asking if she has seen the newspaper. In this example, you see that Robert is asking salt for coffee, so he has like a word, a word difficulty in the language skill. And then uh, he, when he, she tells him he has some, when she inquires him, he deflects her concern by changing the topic, uh, it's newspaper. So the social communication, he deflects, uh, uh, you know, he's trying to hide his difficulty. So he, this question is about the early phase of dementia. Uh, let's talk about the middle phase of dementia. In this stage, uh, uh, people, a person with dementia experience moderate loss of long and short-term memory. Learning new material becomes very difficult. Uh, comprehension, trouble understanding day-to-day -day conversations, maybe unable to understand when people talk too fast, and difficulty focusing and paying attention, easily distracted by noise, by noise, may require a repetition of simple direction, may not understand what's read, what's read, what's read, he read a book but they may not understand it, may miss facial expression, uh, language skill, they lose ability to remember names, words. Language is often uh, gibberish. They may repeat questions endlessly. May have difficult reading and writing. Social communication, unclear, not a related conversation. Difficulty to start conversation. Incomplete answers to question. May forget the question that was asked. Let's see an example. At age 76, Robert he received diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease and now at 79 he's under your care. This afternoon you observe him struggling with his newspaper, squinting and eventually setting it aside with a hint of frustration. He try and look at it here as an example. He tries to read but he couldn't, you know, he can't he read this, he reads it, but he doesn't understand it. With the television playing a voice in the background you know, there's a distraction in there. Robert leaves the room. You decide to approach him to offer assistance, but he turns away and becomes reminiscing about his day working at the grocery store. So when you look at this example, first, he was reading, but he couldn't understand it. That's why he was uh, tired of it. So uh, he has a language skill difficulty here. And then he, he, he has a social communication uh, problem because he was talking about unrelated conversation. He, he went and he, he was talking about the grocery store right here. And a little sound disturbs him, so the, the television it disturbs him. So all, all this is about middle phase dementia. Let's talk about the late phase of dementia. In this stage of dementia, uh, people cannot form new memories does not know time, place, and person, and fails to recognize self or family members. Comprehension does not understand the meaning of words, may be unaware that someone is talking to them. On the language, repeat things over and over again, may speak only in slang or nonsense, or revert back to language of their origin. Social communication, no longer aware of social interaction or what's expected. Let's see the example. At age 85, Robert remains under your care. He frequently occupies his chair, gazing out of the window. His wife, Wendy, visits him regularly, taking a seat beside him. When she's by his side, he occasionally glances at her, but no longer recognizes her. This is the key. He doesn't know her anymore. 
quickly diverting his gaze back towards the window. So this is a perfect example for late face uh, dementia. Now let's see how the strategies and tips, how do we help them? Uh, how do we foster communication with this kind of population? Uh, before we go there, let's, let's just touch base a little bit. Uh, generally, do not internalize the behaviors of a person with dementia personally. It's not personal at all. Exercise heightened caution in your approach when dealing with someone with dementia and be mindful of your nonverbal communication. Refrain from engaging in arguments or the need to prove yourself right. Be open to, to offering apologies. Say, I'm sorry, it's okay. Practice kindness, wear a smile, and strive to maintain a positive demeanor whenever possible. So we're trying to get a lot of strategies to help them communicate normally. Strategies, uh, the book uh, gives us a lot of ideas for strategies, like respect, give information, getting information, nonverbal gesture, environment, listen, interpret, information approach. So when we are doing all this, how do we do it? So the book explains it very well. The first one is approaching. When you approach uh, someone, how are you gonna do it? First, you need to maintain composed and relaxed attitude as you approach the individual. You always approach them from front or, or to the side, never in the back. And wait for their attention before engaging in the conversation. It's important to introduce yourself each time you interact because they forget. Using a warm tone of voice, friendly facial expression, and a smile, communicate with them. Address the person by their preferred name and clarify your presence and purpose. Why you are there? What are you going to do? Explain what you're going to do. And nonverbal gestures. Consider asking for permission before touching as a means to maintain the individual attention. Usually, touching is a good way to communicate with dementia people, but when you touch, you need to ask uh, permission. When interacting, uh, to sit alongside a seated person rather than standing. If someone is uh, sitting, just sit with them. Don't stand uh, right next to them. Be mindful of your body language to prevent an intentional display of emotion. Utilize visual cues such as pointing, gesturing, demonstrating, or employing props to enhance communication. Gesturing usually helps. It's good uh, to communicate. Uh, engage the person by involving them in tasks. You know, when you work, uh, involve them. Have them to work. Uh, have them to participate. Ensure your physical interaction. Involve gentle touches and gradual movements to promote comfort and understanding. Give information. Use a low tone pitch of voice. Talk slowly and clearly. Say less, don't talk too much because they don't grasp it. It's like blah, 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 blah. Don't talk too much, just talk to the point. What do you need? What do you want to communicate? Slow down, demonstrate to help the person understand what you are saying. Keep sentences short and simple, one idea at a time. Ask rather than tell the person what to do. Asking is easier, so it lets them talk whatever they like. But when you tell them, it's like ordering them, so they become argumentative and it's not good. Limit information to current reality. What do you want to tell that person? What do you want to ask? Getting information. When you try to get information, you need to allow plenty of time. If the person has difficulty finding words, ask him or her to explain it in a different way. Uh, avoid or reframe open-ended questions. Uh, open-ended questions are hard uh, for dementia people uh, to explain so because that requires thinking. So you really have to make whatever, whatever questions you want to ask to yes and no or just choices, alternatives. Logics, they don't understand logic. And the mention of time, they don't understand time. And ask one question at a time. Listen, when we listen, we need to be aware of our body language. 
emotions, movements, and feeling. Validate. So compare the person's feeling and what the person is saying. Remain still when the person is talking. Respect. Communicate respectfully. Know what you are saying and how are you saying it. Focus on the ability the person has. Do not talk down to the person or treat him or her as a child. Respect. You know, talk to the person. Do not talk about the person. Talk to the person. And the environment uh, is another one. Avoid la loud noises when you are communicating with a person with dementia. Loud voices are not uh, acceptable uh, for any kind of clients, but especially for dementia, uh, it's very important. It's, it's quiet. Practicing common strategies. The first one, uh, when we practice common strategies, the first one is avoid or reframe open-ended questions. We already talked about it about uh, open-ended questions, but let's talk about it again now. There's there's two kind of questions: uh, open-ended or closed-ended questions. Open-ended questions are questions that cannot be answered with a yes or no. This kind of questions requires a person to think and make sense of what's being said. This is difficult for a person with dementia. Caregivers should reframe this open question so that it will be answered yes or no or alternative method. Do you want coffee or tea? You want to go with me? Yes or no? You know, Just open-ended question. I mean, do not make it open-ended. Make it closed-ended for dementia people. Avoid logic, reason, or mention of time. Person with dementia may lose the ability to use complex reasoning to process information logically, so they can't do logic. For dementia person, time can be present, past, and future, so they don't understand time anymore. Asking a reason, logic, or the mention of time for a person with dementia is impossible to answer. So please remember, avoid reason, logic, and mention of time. And ask rather than tell the person what to do. Telling the person what to do is frustrating for the person with dementia. So all, all the time, ask, do you like coffee? And say less. You know, complex information needed to be avoided. And practice gentle deception. Listen. Let the person with dementia talk to whatever the person wants to talk. It does not have to be correct, but just listen to them. Now let, let's move to lesson nine, trauma-informed care. The picture I put in here is like someone has hit many times with trauma and somebody has passed through trauma. There are a lot of coping mechanisms for trauma. Uh, coping mechanisms refers to strategies individuals employ to manage stress and trauma. Uh, defense is one of them. Defense is protecting oneself from or resisting or an impending threat or attack. Uh, adaptive means to tolerate and navigate through stressful situation without succumbing to overwhelming stress. Avoidance is distancing oneself from source of stress to reduce its impact. Attack means redirecting one's focus and consciousness toward a different person or group, diverting attention away from the stressor or stressful situation. Behavioral is like modifying one's action and behaviors to minimize or eliminate the stress being ex ex experienced. Cognitive is altering truth process and cognitive patterns to reduce or remove source of stress. And self-harm is uh, harming uh, self uh, intentionally. So people with dementia have different cultures, uh, so we need to respect the, uh, the culture. So uh, culture has impact. Culture has a big impact on people and it shapes how a person reacts and responds to trauma. As a caregiver, you should respect other people's culture, spirituality, beliefs, and routines, and know the appropriate body language and always use please and thank you appropriately. Trauma-informed care. Trauma-informed care aims to involve individuals who's undergone trauma acknowledge the presence of trauma related symptoms 
and understand the role trauma has played in their life. Several individuals have faced diverse levels of trauma in their past experiences. Trauma in former care is about maintaining sensitivity to issues or behaviors that may be connected to an individual's past. Delivering effective trauma informed care results in an improved sense of physical and emotional safety and leads to enhanced relationship and behaviors. If you observe the triggering of trauma, whether it's a known or unknown trauma, maintain sensitivity towards the individual and take action to address the, the situation. Principles of trauma informed care. Trauma informed care is recognized and knowledge the traumatic event in an individual's life as integral to their identity. Trauma informed care is guided by five fundamental principles. Uh, generally, um, trauma informed care is like understanding uh, a person, uh, you know, understanding that this person passed this kind of life in the past. So, knowing the person uh, past life. Uh, so you know that person, you understand him, just like that in simple words. Uh, so the, the first one is safety. The, the trauma informed care is guided by five fundamental principles. The first one is safety. Safety is first, trustworthiness, uh, belief. So you need to have the people, uh, people uh, with dementia believe you, otherwise they're not going to be cooperative with the care. And choices, have them choose what they want as much as possible. And collaboration, so you need to work together to be effective. And empowerment, power, personal ability, makes them uh, powerful on the, on the jobs that they are doing, on the care, on their doing. Whatever they can, let them do it. In order to effectively assist individuals who have experienced trauma, it's essential to prioritize self-care and establish a healthy work and life balance. Engaging in activities such as drumming, singing, dancing, and yoga has demonstrated effectiveness in regulating emotions and behaviors and easing the impact of trauma. Additional activities that can be valuable for different individuals include aromatherapy, just like using a aroma senses and uh, baking that's cooking cleaning dancing and uh, drawing and uh, doodling scribbling exercising hugging a pillow or stuffed animal knitting or sewing listening to favorite music appreciating pleasant things like flowers or art uh, meditating pampering oneself with nail care plant seeds play a musical instrument pray punch a punching bag Read, rip paper, sing, spend time with other people, take a nap, take a relaxing bath or shower, watch favorite show, write and more. You know, there are a lot of activities we can do, but uh, these are uh, a little bit to just to list. Thank you very much. Uh, we finished uh, module three. Uh, thank you.